Hebrews 9.27 It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. There will be a day where you will stand before the Lord God Almighty and your whole life will be judged. Imagine entering the gates of heaven, standing before a God that knows everything about you, absolutely everything. Just imagine how you will feel. The English language does not have enough words to convey to us the wonder and the glory and the immensity of standing in front of him with his eyes that are of a flaming fire. And those eyes will be looking directly at you. And each hour and each minute of every hour and each second of every minute will be examined. The Bible says, for God will bring every deed into judgment, including everything hidden, whether it is good or evil. Now imagine in this moment, if God was to say to you, I created you with so many talents, gifts and skills, but you never reached your full potential. I was the still small voice that you heard, that whispered to you throughout your whole life, that told you over and over again, that there is more to life than this. But you ignored that voice and chose to live a life that I never designed for you. One thing that really hurts me is that some of you watching this video today will never do what God knows you are capable of doing. You will never bring into fruition the potential that God has put inside you. And there is no one to blame but yourself. There is no doubt that God has given you and will continue to give you opportunity after opportunity for you to fulfill the potential which is upon your life. But most of you will ignore or simply dismiss these opportunities. Either because you think it's beneath you or above you, but God does not make mistakes. The chances of you being born in terms of the correct sperm meeting the right egg is 1 in 400 trillion. This figure does not take into account the chances of your mother and father even crossing paths, let alone even them having a conversation. Let's take a look at the number 1 in 400 trillion. You have a better chance of getting hit by lightning than being born. So don't you dare tell me or ever believe the lie that you're not on this earth for a reason. The sheer fact that you are here is because God knew you. God knew you before you were born. You're not a biological accident or a genetic miscalculation. You are divinely fashioned by a sovereign God who made you just like you are. That's why God said to Jeremiah, I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee. I sanctified thee. I ordained thee. This is what God also did to you before you were born. He knew you. Every hair on your hair is numbered. Before you were born, he sanctified you. To be sanctified is to be set apart. That's why you've gone through your whole life feeling like you don't fit in. Because you were set apart. How can you fit in when God wants to elevate you to new heights? Places you've never been before. Places you've never seen. Exodus chapter 9 verse 16 says, But I have raised you up for this very purpose that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all of the earth. Everything God creates has a purpose. Every tree, every bird, every star in the sky has a purpose. He is not a God who creates without reason. So why would God create you without a purpose? Philippians 4.13 needs to be engraved into your mind. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There is not a thing on this earth you cannot accomplish. That means failure cannot stop you. Bankruptcy cannot stop you. Rejection cannot stop you. Heartbreak cannot stop you. Pain will not stop you. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, God's special possession. You were born to win, born to excel, created to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. That's why you have haters. You will always have haters. They see what's inside you. You might as well acknowledge and see what's inside you. You're a designer's original, fearfully and wonderfully made by God himself. You cannot be duplicated, replicated, or even imitated. 
Therefore you shouldn't be intimidated. No one can walk like you do. No one can see the world like you do. That's why you don't need to be in competition with anyone else because you're in a class all by yourself. Everything about you is designed to be great. Now the amazing thing about the human conscience is this. That even if you don't believe what I'm saying, you believe what I'm saying. That even if you reject the truth of what I'm saying, there is rooted inside you a conviction which you can suppress with the years, but which is there nonetheless, which is telling you that these things are so. And this truth is the truth which the scripture will not let us forget. It's not an accident that you are here. You have been sent from eternity into time to fulfill a purpose that only you can fulfill. Now the problem with the human mind and this generation is that a large proportion of people believe for them to fulfill their purpose they need to be famous, have an audience or they need to be rich. That's not correct. Your purpose could be a purpose that doesn't require an audience. You could be designed to be the best doctor in the state or open up the best bakery in the state or even be a missionary that goes to places that the gospel has never reached. I am here simply to inspire you. For you to make a declaration to yourself, to your loved ones and to God Almighty that you will find your purpose on this earth. And for those of you who already know why God created you, you need to stop being a passive, soft, frail, fragile Christian. It is your duty as a child of God to take up the whole armor of God in Ephesians 6. Grab the shield of faith, grab the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and go after your purpose, go after your destiny, go after your dreams. Why do I need the armor of God, you may ask? It's because your dreams will not be handed to you. You have an adversary who is hell bent on ensuring that you do not reach the purpose and the goals that God has set aside for your life. His mission is to ensure that he frustrates God's plan for your life. One thing that gets me angry is looking into the audience and looking into the amount of people with low levels of self-esteem. It would frighten you, the amount of people that die without reaching their full potential. They live their whole life looking at other people who have achieved great and amazing things, not realizing the gifts and the talents God has put inside them. Enough is enough. How long are you going to live your life as a victim? Anytime any resistance comes your way, you give up. One of Les Brown's greatest quotes, it's much easier to come up with excuses of why you can't do it. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. Stop taking the easy route your whole life. Always surrendering at the first sight of adversity. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. It's time for you to look in the mirror and take accountability of where you are in life. Are you wasting your gift? Can you honestly look in the mirror and say, I am using all the gifts and talents God has given me to their full potential? Or do you look in the mirror and feel like you're stuck? The harsh reality is you can only blame yourself. There are countless of people who have had a worse start in life than you, and yet they still manage to utilize the gifts and the talents that God has given them and to make their life a success. It's not too late for you. That's the reality. It really is not too late for you. You're not too old. Colonel Sanders, the founder of KFC, founded KFC at the age of 62. At the age of 62, in the space of 12 years, in the space of 12 years, he had built the company to have over 600 franchised outlets. You may be in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or maybe even your 60s. It's not too late. Jesus didn't start his ministry until he was in his 30s. And look what he did in those three years. He literally changed the world in three years. God is with you. It's okay not being born with the greatest tools. It's not an excuse. 
Philippians 4.13 doesn't say, I can do all things through the tools God has given me. No, it says I can do all things through Christ. The only thing you need is Christ. The whole world can be against you, but all you need is Christ.